Hi everyone, welcome back to Unraveling Autism. In this episode, we'll be looking at how we teach autistic children to read. Firstly, let's have a look at what reading is. Reading is when we make meaning from printed word. The act of reading requires two things. Firstly, that we identify the word that is in print, and this is called word recognition. It can include both sight reading and the recognition and blending of phonic sounds to make a word. The second part of reading is that we understand the printed word, whether it be a word, a sentence or a paragraph. This aspect of reading is known as comprehension. So why is reading important? Reading is the building block for all learning, whether it be at school, college or even for life in general. Reading is a life skill that we use to navigate our world. For example, to fill out forms, to read correspondences, to complete tests such as a learner's license test, to read road signs or other notices, to enter into contracts with third parties, for example, to lend money or to open a bank account, and even to draw up and to execute a will. Reading is also necessary to follow and understand media information such as newspapers, magazines and social media. So what happens before we learn to read? In the case of neurotypical development, there are certain abilities and skills that will precede reading. The first is being able to listen to others and then understanding what you are listening to. This is called oral comprehension. Then speaking the words that you have a knowledge of and constructing sentences in order to communicate. For example, a toddler would first listen to the word milk when his mother says it then he understands the meaning of the word because it is repeatedly associated with a bottle of milk. And then he learns to say the word milk and later he learns to ask for milk when he is thirsty. When the child is exposed to and taught sounds and letters, he will begin to decode words and sentences and to understand them in context. And this is called reading. With appropriate instruction, the, the child will also learn to write words and letters. The skill of writing is one that follows or is taught simultaneously with reading. Difficulties with oral comprehension and communication are part of the disability of autism, and these deficiencies will lead to difficulties with the various aspects of reading. Since written text is a form of communication, while reading involves both recognition and the comprehension of written text. So how do autistic children learn to read? The process of learning to read varies from one autistic child to the next. They don't all learn to read in the same way, and they do not have the same abilities when it comes to reading. Some may not ever learn to read. Some are nonverbal and yet can be taught to read. Some read fluently but struggle to comprehend paragraphs, complex sentences and full stories or books. Some can read and comprehend very well, with enough ability to be able to attend college in order to obtain a diploma or degree, but such autistics would still struggle to interact socially and to make friends. Most autistics struggle to understand symbolic meaning in language, aspects such as idiom, proverb, irony and humour. For example, an autistic child may, may not be able to understand that seeing red means to be very angry instead of being able to see the color red. Why do many autistic children have reading difficulties? Autism is characterized by an impairment in communication and some children with autism may not speak. Some may exhibit significant speech delays. Others may speak fluently but fail to understand symbolic aspects of language such as humor, irony, or the underlying meaning of a complex sentence, a message or a paragraph. Since the written word is a symbolic method of communication using written text, it follows that children with autism, since they have a communication impairment, will also have difficulties with various aspects of reading. Let's look at some of the problems that may be encountered when teaching an autistic child to read. Poor phonological decoding skills and poor phonic skills. Phonological awareness is an awareness of the sound structures of the spoken word. 
while phonic skills is an ability to recognize the sounds of letters in written text and to blend letters to form words. Problems with comprehension and understanding. The child may understand words and simple sentences, but struggle to understand more complex sentences. As sentences get longer and text transmits multiple meanings or layers of meaning, the child's comprehension will decrease. One out of every three children with ASD will have a significant impairment in reading comprehension, despite having reached age-appropriate levels of word reading. So this means that they would be able to decode and read words and sentences, but struggle to understand more complex sentences and paragraphs, and this ultimately affects their overall comprehension. Then the child fails to derive the overall meaning or message when reading a paragraph, paragraphs, longer pieces of text, or the book as a whole. This is referred to as a failure to comprehend the gestalt. For example, a child may understand a sentence explaining that a person is standing at a graveside crying, but may at the same time fail to comprehend that the reason for the tears is because someone dear to the person has passed away. The child fails to understand figurative meanings in written texts such as metaphor, idiom, proverb, irony, and humor. This difficulty is related to the failure to understand these aspects within oral communication. Some further problems would be comprehending vocabulary, including words that have multiple meanings and abstract concepts. For example, the word position could mean physical situation, but it could also mean a vacant post, depending on the context. And the child with autism would struggle to understand which meaning is applicable or may only understand the word at one level of meaning. Then deciphering the figurative meaning of words, as I've said, for example, being blue means to feel bad rather than referring to a color. Having difficulties relating to written text to important background information, such as roles, custom, history, all of which impacts on the meaning of the text. So autistic kids may not have sufficient background knowledge to be able to make sense of written text. So how do you teach an autistic child to read? Here we are referring to the process of decoding words, reading fluently, and comprehending simple sentences. The process of comprehending more complex text is a separate matter, which I will perhaps cover in a different video. Most children with autism are visual learners. This means that they will learn well from the use of pictures and can also learn to sight read. Sight reading is the process of learning whole words and the meaning of the word, but without sounding out the individual letters. You can, for instance, show a child a flashcard or a picture of a cat and then show and say the word cat on a separate card or on the reverse of the flashcard. In this way, the child will learn to read the word cat, but not necessarily by sounding it out. Accumulate a range of flashcards with words on the reverse of the card or pictures of objects as well as separate cards with the names of these objects. And then teach your child to match the picture to the word and to say the word out loud. You must have cards for this purpose. Place three pictures on a table and get your child to match the word card to the correct picture. If your child cannot match successfully, Switch the pictures and have him try again. Place three word cards on a table and get your child to match a picture on to the correct word. I will show you how to do this in a later slide. While your child is matching words and pictures, say the words out loud and encourage him to do the same. Once your child knows the word and can successfully match word to picture and picture to word, Ask him to read the word card by, by itself without the use of any picture to accompany the word card. You can use pictures and word cards or flashcards with words on the reverse side for many objects or things that are commonly encountered in the world by your child. Now I'm going to show you how you would do this in practice. So here you have a field of three cards a cat, an apple, and a bird, and you have a flashcard for cat. 
You would ask your child to match and the child would then have to take the flashcard cat and place it either on top of the cat, uh, the picture of the cat or beneath it. In this way, we know that the child has actually been able to read the word cat in order to perform the matching activity. Then you would also switch, uh, switch cards around and um, use a different flashcard, for example, Apple, and then get your child to match again by placing the word Apple on top of the picture Apple or beneath it. This is how uh, we know that the child is then reading the flashcard. Once your child has successfully matched a word to a picture, you could uh, alter the activity. Here you have a field of three words um, and you have a picture of an apple. You could ask your child to match and your child would then need to um, pick up the card apple and either place it beneath um, the word apple or on top of it. And in this way, uh, the matching activity is evidence of being able to read the word. Once your child has mastered matching a word to its picture and a picture to its word, you can then move on to reading the known words without the aid of a visual. Um, so here we are talking about words that your child has already learned to read. Um, you could then say to the child, give me the apple, or you could say point to the bird, or what's this by pointing to a particular card, and your child would then have to vocalize the word. So you would say bird, or you would say apple. This is reading as we know it. If your child matches incorrectly or reads incorrectly, correct him by matching the correct picture to the correct word, or the correct word to the correct picture and say the correct word out loud. Then adjust the field of pictures by switching the cards around and ask your child to match again. For common nouns such as dog or fish, source pictures of photo or photos of dog or a fish. Um, for verbs such as run or jump, source clear pictures of a person running or jumping. You could also demonstrate a run or a jump physically while holding out the card. For emotions, source appropriate pictures such as a happy face or a sad face. For prepositions, source pictures of related objects, example, a ball on a table, a ball under a table, a ball next to a table. You could also demonstrate these positions physically. The idea is for you to teach your child as many words as possible, but words that he would encounter in his own environment. You can teach your child to read the words for a range of categories using the methods I've described. Here are some suggestions. You could start with animals, then body parts, then people, for example, mum, dad, brother or sister. In this case, it would be best to use actual photos then fruits, vegetables and food, example, banana, potato, bread, chicken, then things in the bedroom, in the bathroom or in another room in the house, for example, bath, basin, bed, blanket, toys, for example, teddy bear, stationery, pen and ruler, then also colors, shapes and clothes. Use words of things that the child commonly encounters in his world. This will increase the chances of him being able to read these words and also the chances that he will use them to communicate in the future. Once you have taught individual words, you can then move on to the reading of simple sentences. For example, the cat sat on the mat with an accompanying picture of a cat sitting on a mat. Um, Apart from the reading of flashcards, you should also engage your child in the daily act of reading a story. You could read simple stories out loud to your child. Choose a specific time of day and place when your child is calm and relaxed. Um, use simple books with good clear pictures and very simple sentences. Read out loud and point to the words um, as you engage your child. Find books that have subjects and topics that interest your child and that are suitable for your child's abilities and level of development. 
So here I'm not specifically talking about the child reading the book. I'm talking about you reading the book to the child. Uh, for example, if your child loves animals, buy simple books about animals with lots of good quality pictures. Books that have photographs in them are also very useful. Non-fiction books can also be quite good as they don't have a lot of symbolic meaning. For example, a book about dogs or transport or how bread is made, for example. While you are teaching your child to, to sight read words using flashcards, you can also teach your child phonetic sounds. You would teach both the name and the sound of the letter. For example, show a card of the letter B or M and then ask what name as well as afterwards what sound. So if you look at the letter M, um, the answer to what name would be M and the answer to what sound would be M. Whereas for the letter B, the answer to what name would be B, the answer to what sound would be B. Prompt the correct answer by saying it for your child until he is able to say it by himself. So once your child has learned the phonetic sounds of letters, you can then teach him to sound out each letter in a simple word and then to blend the sounds together to make a simple, wo a simple word. For example, B, A, T makes bat, R, A, T makes rat. Sound out the letters and make the word out loud until your child is able to do this, um, this activity of blending by himself. You would need to sound out both familiar and unfamiliar words. Here are some examples of phonic word lists that can be used for blending purposes. Bat, cat, mat, fat, sat, hat. So your child should be able to, um, after some time, um, blend these sounds together to make the word and be able to say the word. And if you gave him an unfamiliar word, for example, rat, he would then need to be able to sound out r at rat by himself. Pot, hot, cot, dot, lot, got. Um, fan, man, can, ran, pan, van. So the idea is um, basically for your child to sound out the letters, make the word, and then to be able to sound out and make unfamiliar words, um, which for instance rhyme uh, with these simple words. Um, this is the initial act of reading. Some children um, will not be able to learn to read because they um, are not sufficiently attentive, they will not engage with you, they may not remain seated at the table or in one place on the floor for a reasonable length of time. They are constantly moving around, engaged in their own activity. So to get your, your child seated at the table and ready to engage with you, start by doing other activities that he may enjoy. Example, drawing together, doing a simple puzzle or a pegboard or playing simple games, even a matching game, for example. Um, if your child is not table ready, you would have to take a step back and simply engage with your child on a daily basis by um, activities of play that are suitable to your child's level. Um, any games that your child would enjoy where there's a back and forth between you and your child is what you would have to do um, to get your child to be sufficiently attentive. And um, once uh, this is accomplished, you can then Get you, try to get your child seated at a table and then begin to do activities at the table. So once um, he is used to staying seated at the table at the table for five to ten minutes, engaged in an activity, you can then try to introduce reading. Um, I'd like to share some of my own personal experiences with my daughter um, when it came to reading. Um, so she began to read at the age of six. Her ability to communicate lagged behind the abilities of her peers, but learning to read words was not difficult for her. Her first experience was the sight reading of flashcards, which contained pictures and then the relevant word on the reverse of the card. For example, a card with a diamond shape on it and the word diamond on the reverse of the card. 
We showed her the picture, said the word diamond, and then turned the card around and showed her the word diamond and said it aloud. And after a few repeats of this process, she read the word on her own. She learned to sight read many common words, examples, shapes, animals, household objects, and common verbs. At remedial school, she learned the phonic sounds of words and then to blend letters to sound out a word. She then began to read simple first readers at school. She continued to be a strong reader throughout junior primary, but in senior primary, she had immense difficulties with comprehension and understanding figurative meaning, as well as the overall message of written text. She could read the text comfortably and she could understand the literal meaning, but she struggled to understand figurative meanings, complex sentences, detailed paragraphs, the overall meaning of text, as well as questions in comprehensions that began with why or how. Um, answering more complex questions in comprehension were a real challenge for her. She also struggled to do things like evaluate, describe, and to form her own opinion and to provide summaries of the gist of written text. And all of this obviously went back to the, to the core issue of not being able to properly comprehend what she had read. And these difficulties persisted into high school and they prevented her from being able to learn independently from textbooks and set works. The difficulties that she experienced with reading at school continued into young adulthood. She dislikes and becomes anxious when reading books of content that is beyond her level of comprehension. However, she loves to read independently um, the following young adult books, newspapers, magazines, social media content, non-fiction content dealing with her favorite topics, for example, dogs, animals, pop stars, movies. She is able to easily understand and read signs and warnings in public places um, and on public roads. Thank you for listening. Uh, and I hope and wish that you have a lot of success in your efforts to help your child to read. Our next video will be about the special relationship between animals and children with autism. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like more useful and practical information about how to help children with ASD.